In this diagram, we've got a person running around a track. And the question we've been asked here is, what is the total distance traveled by the athlete? And what is the displacement of the athlete? Okay, so hopefully you can see it's going from A to B and the total distance it's covering is 300 meters. But what about displacement? Now, if you look at the word, it means how far you've been moved away from your original place to your original position. Okay, so he's started at A, now he's at B. So his displacement is 80 meters. But that's not enough. You also need to give the direction as well. So he's moved A to, from A to B, which as you can see from the compass at the top is north. So what's the difference between distance and displacement? Okay, so distance is a scalar, displacement is a vector. So scalars are quantities magnitude only. Basically, they only have size. So for a number, basically. A vector, however, is a quantity with magnitude, so it has size as well, a number associated with it, but also has a direction. Okay, let's look at some examples of scalars and vectors. So first example of a scalar is temperature. And here this shows the temperature around some buildings. And here the, by the window is like eight degrees Celsius, while the wall here is four degrees Celsius. So each point is associated with a magnitude, a something of a certain size. But however, it doesn't have a direction. So the temperature doesn't, isn't pointing in a certain direction. An example of a vector is velocity. So here is showing the wind around the UK. And each point not only has a size for the speed of the wind, so for example, five meters per second, but also has a direction. So that's what vectors have. They also have a direction as well. For so example, here it's 24 meters per second. So the arrow would be longer to indicate that um, the speed of the wind, the magnitude of the wind speed is larger, but also gives a direction. So you can give the direction in many ways. You don't have to use north, east. You can use left, right, bottom, and so on. You can also use angles as well. Okay, another example of a vector is gravitational field. And as you can see here, the length of the arrow indicates the strength of the, the magnitude of the field. And then the direction obviously is clearly pointing in, the, in a certain direction as well at each point. Okay, another example of a scalar is energy. So here we've got an engine of putting minus 20 joules of energy in and getting out 50 joules of energy. A common mistake that students make is that they think just because a quantity can be positive and negative that, that makes it a vector. Not necessarily, okay? So in this case, minus 20 might mean that you're using up 20 joules of energy while you're gaining 50 joules of energy. So that doesn't mean it's a vector. It doesn't mean it's pointing in a certain direction, okay? In this example of a vector, we've got momentum. We've got a ball bouncing off a wall elastically. So that means it hasn't lost any energy. So in this example, if it's, you should put a negative in front of the um, one of the momentums like I've done here with a negative five kilogram meters per second when it's going towards the left. This is because momentum is a vector and the negative number does indicate that it's going in the opposite direction to the positive one. Now I could have defined this the other way around. I could define the top one as negative, uh, so towards the right is negative and the bottom, uh, the ones towards the left as positive. That's okay, as, but you have to be strict and you have to stick to the convention. Okay, so normally the typical convention is upwards positive and towards the right is positive, downwards is negative, and towards the left is negative. And again, you, this is for vectors and you don't need to worry about this for scalars. Okay, when it comes to adding scalars, it's pretty straightforward. So for example, in this case, you've got 100 grams of water and you've got 20 grams of powder you're adding to it. So you just becomes 120 grams. Okay, it's not that complicated. As long as they have the same units, you can just add them. Uh, and also with multiplying, it's, it's also very straightforward. However, with vectors is a bit more complicated. So with vectors, you've got them all pointing in a certain direction. So you can't just add them. I mean, you can add them if they're always in the same direction, pointing the exact same direction. Or, and you can subtract them if they're in opposite directions. However, if they're in a different direction with some angle between them, like this one, it's more complicated. You might have to use trigonometry, you might have to use Pythagoras, or you might have to use a scale diagram like this one I'm showing here. So adding vectors is more complicated than adding scalars. Okay, some other examples of scalars and vectors here. So I've got distance, speed, mass, temperature, density, volume, area, energy, power, and this uh, vectors, we've got displacement, which is equivalent of distance, but as a vector. Velocity, which is like speed, but also with a direction. And acceleration, force, momentum, gravitational field strength. There are others as well.